Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmix on the broadcast today with the Dock Workers Strike. We're talking to Paul Enos, CEO of the Nevada Trucking Association, here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Carson Valley, hate your place for the good times. Carson Valley. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Fernley. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. They want us to believe we only have two options. That's just not working anymore. I've never been a follower. I'm a businessman and entrepreneur. I'm ready to forge a new path to secure our future. One that keeps Northern Nevada free, fair, and wild. A path that means freedom for all, including affordable housing. I'm Greg Kidd, and I approve this message because I'm not from either political party. I'm for Nevada. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program my landlord, Paul Enos. He's the CEO of the Nevada Trucking Association. Pleasure to have you back, sir. Hey, happy to be back in uh, my office. <laughs> there you go. Um, wanted to have you come on and talk about the uh, dock worker strike. Um, as we record this, uh, this just really kicked off yesterday. Um, give us the background and how you think that this is going to affect our economy because it's huge so it, it is a huge impact you know it, it's going to affect um you know electronic equipment shoes clothing imported goods food about um 85 percent of imported canned goods come from those ports about 80 percent of imported wine beer scotch i'm a big irish whiskey lover is going to be affected 85% or se sorry, 75% of all the bananas consumed in the United States. So that's where we're going to see some of the first impacts, I think, on some of those, you know, perishable food items. Um, they haven't been to the bargaining table since June, the, the ports and the, the longshoremen. There is one person in the United States of America who has the ability to get them back to the bargaining table, who has the ability to say, hey, we're not going to strike. You got to have an 80 day cool down period. And that's President Joe Biden. And disappointingly, but really unsurprisingly, you know, especially a, a cat who uh, walked picket lines with the UAWs, uh, UAW when um, they were striking against the, the car companies. Um, you know, he's he's taken a powder on this. And, you know, I, I look at this, the the union rejected a 50 percent increase. They right. wanted a 77 percent increase. Um, they want and, and, no, can, and can we point out that these guys are making 200 grand a year? Some of them are making more than that. So yeah, it's not, you know, Sam, if it was a job that was based on merit and hey, the best person, you know, rises to the top, but that's not what we have. We have jobs, it's who you know, it's generational. Um, these are very hard jobs to get and they work hours um, bankers would be jealous of. Um, but that said, I'm sympathetic to them on, on one hand because the ocean carriers, the folks that they're negotiating with, 
they're not the best actors either. Well, they're making, they've been making billions of dollars. Sure. And, and, and look, the, they've been screwing trucking companies for a long time. So In what way? Know, so they have what they called, and we finally got some relief on this from Congress and from the Federal Maritime Commission. So um, detention and demurrage charges. So imagine, um, you know, trucks, they, they go, they pick the chassis up, they pick up the containers from the, from the ships. Um, if there's any issues not getting the ship unloaded or if the ports don't have room to take the containers back, they were charging the trucking companies for every day they had it out. So imagine, you know, you go and rent, uh, you go and rent a tool from Home Depot, um, 24 hours, right? You bring it back in that 24 hours and Home Depot says, you know, we don't have any room for it here. So uh, you just keep paying that daily rate. That's what they were doing to trucking companies. There is no American ocean carrier today. These are all foreign companies. They are not the best folks to deal with. And the sad thing here is, you know, I, I look at the union, I look at the ocean carriers, and, you know, I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of sympathy for either of them, but I do have sympathy for the truck drivers that aren't making money. Most of them are small businesses. Most of the people that go into the ports, you know, they're the ones being hurt. I have sympathy. They're, cause, and bottom line, because they're not getting paid. They're not, they're not rolling. Trucks aren't rolling. They're not getting paid. You have right now 62 ships that are waiting to be unloaded, they have contracts to be unloaded in October that are just sitting out there. So all the businesses, all the downstream businesses that are being impacted, that's who I care for and really who's hurt. You know, every American citizen, you know, with a $5 billion a week impact, um, that's a big deal. And here's what's really gross about it. The only reason our ocean carriers are able to do the kind of business they do is because the U.S. taxpayers foot the bill for the United States Navy. The United States Navy is, that is the entity that protects the sea lanes, that has a blue water Navy, that has ships out there, you know, making sure that the pirates aren't going in uh, and getting all of these loads. Without them, you would not have a global shipping industry like we do. All right, well, let, let's, let's move on. And I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying let's move on to another area which is that the shipping companies can utilize this as another way to raise rates. It's not sure. just- No, you're 100% you're right, they, and, and they are. And that's why, look, I, I don't have a sympathy for somebody who makes as much as a doctor, you know, who, who um, works, a, works a light schedule, um, you know, wanting, a, you know, turning down a 50% increase, you know, instead of a 77%. You know, I, I do have some sympathy for folks who, hey, it looks like that job may go away because of automation. Um, you know, because there are more efficient ways to do things. But th the reality is that happened to the trucking industry. You know, prior to 1980, every single rate, route, what you could carry, the authority to have a trucking company was predicated on the government giving you that stamp of approval, whether it was the Interstate Commerce Commission or in places like Nevada, the Public Service Commission. When that changed in 1980, the trucking industry adapted. Now, what did that mean for trucking companies? If you had that authority, you had little competition, you had guaranteed profits, it, it was great. Um, what it meant for the consumer was that about 25% of the cost of that cup you have right there was tied up in transportation charges. After deregulation, and when the trucking industry became competitive, the cost of that, of that cup of coffee went down to 3% in transportation. Huge benefit to the American economy, huge benefit to Americans. The trucking companies that adapted, hey, some are still around, they're doing great. The ones that didn't went away. That is how markets work. And what we have created or really allowed to happen is we have some pinch points in the supply chain. The, the concentration of ocean carriers, once again, none of whom have you know, real interest in the American economy being strong and Americans being okay. It's a global industry. There, there's, yeah, it 100% it, it is. Um, it's a global industry, once again, that only has the ability to exist because of what the United States taxpayers do to fund the Navy. 
Um, you have the so, long so, story. Okay, okay so have, well, hang on. Hold, 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 hold. No, 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 let me, on. no, no. Let me, let me just no, finish I will. my thoughts. But, but what, what, do, what do you suggest um, that the, the U.S. government does uh, in terms of the Navy um, to be able to balance this out? Well, so here's, here's the issue, Sam. When you have centralized entities that have a lot of power and the longshoremen, 45,000 of them that are touching every piece of freight that comes into that port, that's a tremendous amount of power. We need to do a better job at decentralizing. Why, why do things get centralized? Things get centralized because of government regulation, because of economies of scale. The reason the trucking industry is the most resilient link in that supply chain is because 95% of trucking companies have less than 10 trucks. So you don't just have this power concentrated. We needed to fuse some of that power. That that's what we need to do. So right. maybe so maybe For it is so maybe the, it is the global hold on, companies? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. answer I'm gonna answer your question. Okay. Maybe it is looking at antitrust issues with the ocean carriers. Maybe it is taking a look at um, what we have and how we've concentrated that power with these unions. We we had this issue with the railroad strikes. There's six railroads in this country. When you have a concentration of power that puts that link in the supply chain at a bigger risk. And that's what we're seeing, and that's what we're all gonna be living through. And, you know, I would hope that President Biden would, you know, maybe just be a little circumspect, and instead of thinking about, you know, his, his union cred, think about, okay, w what are we gonna do to the American economy? What are we gonna do to damage okay, the American what, economy? Okay, but what happened in the don't? previous administration? There was no difference in the setup then. The, the dock workers were making a ton of money then. Sure. The global companies were making a ton of money sure. then. And, and, here's and, what, and, and here's at the beginning of COVID, the rates were going up for that's, transportation. That's, that's exactly what happened. You know, COVID did kind of shine a light on a lot of the issues that we do have in the, in the supply chain. And we as the trucking industry, we have worked to try to get rid of some of that unfairness that has existed between the ocean carriers and trucking companies and have been successful with bipartisan support in Congress, you know, getting rid of those detention and demurrage fees that I was speaking of. Yeah. But we really need to think about how do we nearshore some of these things? Now, look, you can't nearshore my Middleton Irish whiskey, right? I mean, I want that coming from court. But there are other things that we can nearshore. We can bring a manufacturing industry back here. We can encourage more things to be made here. But when you outsource our economy, yet yeah, we're taking care of all the security for these global supply chains. And you'll look at where we're at today and you go, okay, does this really benefit the, the American people? I think we have to ask some hard questions. And to me, what do we do to become more resilient? What do we do to make the American economy more resilient and not dependent on 40% of our manufacturing coming from China? Okay, now I'm, I'm not gonna disagree with you about wanting to bring more jobs to the United States. But the other side of that coin is that you're going to see increased costs for the American consumer. So, Sammy, uh, how we're do you seeing them now. Well, no, no, we're, you we're, are, we're but aren't you going to see them you know what else? And do you know what else we're seeing? We're seeing Americans without the kind of jobs that, hey, even, even if they were making a quarter of what some of these um, log shoremen make, they would be doing great. You know, when you hollow out your manufacturing base and you don't make things here, um, that has an impact. And I think, hey, we are seeing what happens, you know, really in a very stark way, um, you know, starting with COVID. So, you know, if, if we had leaders who cared, they would take a step back and they'd say, all right, what are the policies that we can put in place to make it easier for American businesses to manufacture here? What are the policies that we could put in place to make it easier for us to get our energy here? All right, what are the policies we could put in place that make it easier to move freight? But we tend not to talk about that too much. The supply chain only becomes an issue um, when there's a problem with it. But you look at, for example, we used to get a lot of products from China. We still do, obviously. But even now, you're seeing products being manufactured in Vietnam, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, because the Chinese costs are too expensive. Yep. So you are definitely going to come back and see an increased cost for the United States if that manufacturing comes back here 
with commensurate wages. So if you see an increase in American jobs here, you know, my hope would be that, that that's where we kind of get it balanced out, you know, where you do have that balance between um, what Americans are paying and what Americans are making. And I'll tell you what, I, I like to buy American. It's really hard to buy American shoes, right? It's really hard to buy American American clothes. Right. So, no, that that is a challenge, Sammy. All right, let's take a break more with Paulie and us. We're going to try to get him fired up in the next segment. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Paul Enos. He is the CEO of the Nevada Trucking Association. So what I wanted to ask you about, too, was um, it seems that uh, people who rely on supplies from the, the docks and the ports um, have been banking supplies for the last couple of months, knowing that this strike was likely to come. Um, where do you see the problems arising if this thing doesn't get settled soon? And I, I don't. The, the well, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. And 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 Christmas, you know, uh, th that would be the next major thing. I guess Thanksgiving, but that's probably already. So, so the first for. place, Sam, is going to be perishable food, right? Okay. So yeah, it's going to be, that, you know, yeah. it's going to be those that seventy-five percent of bananas. You know, those are the those are the kind of things that I think you're going to have your first impact. This is um, right now kind of the peak shipping season for Christmas, so. A artificial Christmas trees and Christmas decorations. Um, are they still on route? A lot of them are still on route, so you might not see as many choices as uh, as you have with some of those some of those things. Um, and the costs goods. are likely to go up. Yeah, and that's you know that's the reality of where we're at today. And you know, honestly, Sam, I I think it kind of starts with. Um, an energy policy that really isn't about how can we make it easier to um, get and uh, use our, our domestic energy here. I mean, I think about right now in Reno, Nevada, how many refineries do you think are serving, serving northern Nevada? Uh, it's very few. I think it's less than 10, isn't it? It's three. Three, okay. It's so, three. So I was right. So there ten. are three refineries. 50 years ago, there were 30. So we have, and once again, a lot of that is based on environmental, like government regulation. We and the fact that we get all of our uh, gasoline from California, California and northern Nevada, uh, 100 uh, ver Versus, you know, being, Texas, I was just in Florida yep. and gas prices is way lower than yeah, they are. Sure, you've got the Gulf. It's really easy, right? Um, no, that's, that's definitely an issue and a problem and one that um, 
good for our governor and Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs for calling out Gavin Newsom um, for what they're doing in California to make it harder to produce energy, who are making it more expensive for consumers there, who are saying, oh, we're gonna put a windfall profits tax on you. Oh, um, we don't wanna have fuel support shortages, so you're gonna need to expand your footprint and have a bunch of fuel there ready to go just in case there's a shortage, which um, you know not only increased costs, and good luck expanding your refinery in most jurisdictions in California right, right. now. Well, and also, so, you know, you're, you're just, not gonna encourage other companies to build refineries because what's the point? That's, why do you think Chevron said hasta la vista to, right. uh, to the Golden State? Okay, you know, let it's me- It's because of those silly ideas and policies. Let me jump into California because we have ports in California. Um, they're already stretched to the max, are they not? So, um, so do they we've have? Seen, any we've seen some of that. We've seen some of that. Um, those issues be allayed um, recently. You know that we've seen in the in the last few years. Um, they can take some capacity, but you know, honestly, it may take you know it may take a ship as long to uh, get from the east coast right. to the west coast. Um, as, as the strike might go on. So it's really so not practical. It's, it's not practical at, the, at this point in time. Now we might see some of that, but um, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's not the panacea. It's not gonna solve the problem. Do you have any thoughts on how long this strike potentially could go on? I mean, and do you see other- The president of the United States could today say, cool it, get back to the bargaining table, you guys chill for 80 days and let's see if we can come to an agreement. The, uh, one of the newspapers I was reading the other day said, this is the October surprise. Maybe, I mean, I, look, I'd rather have this, the, the um, October surprise than a nuclear war, which, you know, scares the, the hell out of me. So, hey, I, I hope that, I hope this is it. And I hope that uh, we're not, um, we're not going to see anything else go down because right now, Sam, you know, I'm is, you know, I'm not scared. I don't live my life on fear, you know, in fear. But when you look at the geopolitical dynamics, when you look at how weak our American leadership is, and when you look at all the fires that are uh, burning around the world, um, it's it, it's a um, it's an uncertain place to be. All right, and, and there are those obviously on the other side that would disagree with you that we have weak leadership because uh, I think our military is as strong as it's ever been. And uh, you know, because of what's been going on in Ukraine and the Middle East, um, the Congress has voted to uh, back... Uh, Once again, Sam, uh, here's... To, I'm sorry, to supply, resupply um, all the military. So we're actually gonna end up with all brand new weaponry uh, because of all the weapons that we are giving to other countries. But let's take a break. We've got one more segment. We'll be right back after this time out. MAGA extremist Sam Brown has repeatedly supported efforts to ban abortion without any exceptions for rape or incest. Before moving to Nevada, Brown ran for office in Texas, where he supported the ban that had the toughest restrictions in the country. And he strongly supported overturning Roe v. Wade. On issues of life, it is a non-negotiable for me. Sam Brown's extreme far-right agenda is wrong for Nevada. Wynn Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NB Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The 
Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Here on 7 at 7, we're bringing you the local headlines in just seven minutes. We've got you covered in the morning, evening, and for all breaking news in between and as it happens. Life is busy and we don't waste your time. Join us for local news now streaming on our YouTube page. This is Nevada Newsmakers. I'm back with Paul Enos, the CEO of the Nevada Trucking Association. The only time I have left is to say thank you for being here. Thanks, I Sammy. appreciate it, man, always. Godspeed, man. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real. It's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Fantastic cocktails and delicious food. It's a good time to eat. Over 500 hot slots plus electronic table games. It's a good time to play player rewards, and big-time jackpots. It's a good time to win. Ooh, you get times to train Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian and at Brian Culp of Photography he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day on various platforms, including television, radio, our website, audio and video podcasts, YouTube. If you want to find the show, you can find it pretty darn easily. And we cover politics, business, health, and education. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next